We are basketball. Italia. The overall organization uh, structure at FIBA is similar to any international federations. It has a, a general assembly with all the members. We have 213, so it's quite a big general assembly. We have then a board, which is uh, in charge of managing the affairs of the federation uh, on a more regular basis, which is uh, 20 people coming from all the continents, so about 10% of the 10% of the overall membership and we do have then the administration who is in charge of administering the, the facts and implementing the decisions of the board. Uh, the career uh, in the administration started more in a... Um, I was very lucky and uh, the... Uh, but I was very ambitious from the start of any my career and uh, in, in in sport when I was uh, when I was in uh, in, uh, in very regional sports here in Lausanne I suddenly they dropped on my table the organization of the referees for the whole Canton de Vaux and I took it over from day one it was a mess for the first six months and then it was it went all quite fine uh, later on I moved on to the national federations and finally I ended up in FIBA but that was really luck I I was at the right competition at the right time. I'm not sure the right guy, but at least they were looking for a, for a legal assistant and I happened to have finished my studies in laws and that's how it all started. Uh, the key professional traits to be successful in the sports industry, probably it's uh, a healthy mixture between uh, Qualifications, obviously you need to somehow know what you're talking about, both sport-wise and, uh, and in terms of administrative skills or uh, financial skills, all, all, the, all the hard skills you need to, you need to have. And, uh, but also you need to have a, uh, you, you have to love the sport, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. It's not the same like working in a bank, which I did to some extent, or being a lawyer. Uh, so you, you, you desperately need to love the sport, what you're doing. and and. And certainly you need to be a little bit competitive or you need to have quite some drive and energy in order to survive in the environment. Um, my vision when I started in FIBA was very clouded. Um, it was, I still didn't realize probably very quickly the enormity of what was happening. I was very lucky to succeed, uh, to not to succeed, to, to, to be the successor of an of, a, of an amazing gentleman like uh, the predecessor, my predecessor, the Secretary General, Mr. Stankovic, and and for me it was almost like continuing to working with him. I just got a title, but I kept working with him, so it didn't really change much on that very moment. And this was also a little bit his strategy. I got slowly, slowly. Um, but at that time we were in the middle of when I took over we were in the middle of moving to Switzerland from from uh, Germany we were in the middle of reorganizing all our uh, organizations because the European offices stayed in Munich so uh, the vision over five years was just please let's survive this next year and reorganizing ourselves and only then after that we were able then to start thinking strategically long term Oceania. Africa. Puerto Rico. China. USA. The, the FIBA is celebrating the 75th anniversary since the June last year and we started off with a, um, a, friendly, a friendly game between France and Switzerland here in Geneva. FIBA was born in Geneva so uh, the start of the, the birthday celebrations was, uh, was here in Geneva which was, which was a very successful one. It doesn't happen very often to see so many people in a, for a basketball game here in Geneva and, uh, and after then we uh, we decentralized all the activities, so all our federations who are having 75th anniversary, some of them do, or some of them are even older than us, and, and uh, they are doing all 
activities on a national level in their own countries and we will be finishing the activities at the end of the year probably with a, publi uh, with a, with a nice publication about the 75th years which will be then publicly uh, distributed. very dictatorial, um, I decide, and the other follow. At least this is in the Secretariat, it's the case. Then um, when you go beyond, then it's obviously highly democratic. Uh, we, we, the board takes decisions uh, based on recommendations made by the Secretary General or on proposals that come from board members or from members. And there, obviously, discussions are very healthy, hot at times, and, uh, and you have to find a good compromise in order to move forward. The key is to uh, the key is to, to set down a set of objectives so that every decision somehow follow the objectives that you have previously set down. The relationship between uh, the different bodies within the FIBA family or the pyramid of the FIBA family is uh, uh, we are a federation of federations. Uh, so we do have 213 of those and we have then after, first the federations become member of FIBA. Then we have created the five continent organizations which then take care on a more daily basis and in a closer way uh, with, those, with those members. So, uh, and we are trying to support uh, those five continent organizations as much as we can with human resources, financial resources, knowledge uh, and whatever is possible in terms of uh, transfer of knowledge in particular, so that they can then go down and help, because from one office it's a little bit difficult to manage all 213. Then within the, within the national federations, obviously they are then structured to some extent differently. When, when we are in the region where we are, it's relatively simple. It's clubs, athletes at the bottom, clubs and then national federations. In some cases you have professional leagues, that creates a lot of problems. Uh, it's not always, it's very positive in the development, but the relationship is not always that easy. And in particular in our case it's maybe more complicated because we are one of the few sports that have a professional league in the United States. So that's, those relationships are sometimes difficult to, uh, to manage in an appropriate way. I think that the, the, um, if we go back 20 years or so, um, I think the, 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 key, uh, the key concept that uh, FIBA put in place and the management at the time, the Secretary General, uh, was to introduce the professionals into our game. And this led to the Olympic Games in 1992 with uh, Barcelona and with the Dream Team coming in. I think this has been the certainly the most dominant and the most successful uh, decision that was taken at the time and pushed forward by management at the time. Um, it led to 10 years of growth of basketball, which in 2002 you will have suddenly a world championship in the United States and it's not the United States who are winning the world championship. So the, the bet that they made at the time was, was the right one and probably it went even faster than what they expected. I think now the next phase is uh, is to try to, uh, his decision was to unite all those 213 members, so there has been a total reorganization of the activities, a total rebranding of the exercise, commercial exploitation that goes along and now, and, and that's probably the second one which is, which means that we have turned now from maybe what is a traditional amateur sports organization to a highly professional organization. And the re we will probably reap the benefits some years down the road. We are basketball. We are basketball. Argentina. Gold medal and Olympic champions, Argentina. We are basketball. It's not anymore gut feelings decisions, uh, like maybe it has been in the past where everything resided very much so and very strongly in the person that was in your chair for over the past 25 years. 
and who had a very good feeling of what the world wanted. Today it's probably much more uh, professional. Uh, you do have a lot of management tools that allow you, I mean, projects have to be brought to the table, you have to, budgets have to be made, they have to be calculated, and then you have to have the support of the board in order to enact them. And after then you have to evaluate whether you're going on or not. So we just we are just in a process right now to set up a, a project we call the cockpit management, which actually follows projects in various, in various areas. It's not just simply organizing an event, it's also whether our decision to implement 3 on 3 will be successful and in how many countries, how many players will join. So it can be a variety of projects, everything. Our commercial department will, is, is, will be evaluated now on a monthly basis, whether they're reaching targets. So it's the same with the sports department, who will be evaluated on how many countries are progressing at what rate. So those are now, we're entering probably, sometimes I have the impression we're a little bit too much. It was much simpler when I even started with FIBA, taking decisions and just doing and going on and then We'll see because the key, the key result was always who was going ending up at the World Championship and being World Champion. So you always calculated results with respect to the sport results of a given country and when more countries were participating. Now it's a bit changed. And we we have been very, very cooperative in this in this environment. We do have. Uh, we are lucky that as a team sport, it is uh, not a substantial problem. Uh, we do have some doping cases here and there. Um, they're sometimes mainly related to uh, the lack of knowledge uh, by teams, doctors, what kind of dietary supplements players can eat. So suddenly they're contaminated and they get positive results. And the second uh, real thing is that we are probably a little bit, we do have cases of social drugs. It's uh, you know, cannabis is, uh, tends to be uh, uh, in the era when you're prohibiting from smoking anything. Well, it's still some people still try to do that, and some athletes do this. Uh, so those are the two anabolic and all these steroids, which which probably tend to strengthen for your body or things. It's, uh, we probably do have, but not in such a big, in such a big. Uh, I mean, we're, we're not really a doping a doping sport, also because playing five players on a court, you do have to be very professionally organizing doping in order to achieve better sporting results. And the, we, only have a, we, we only have an issue a little bit with the, with the NBA on doping, uh, but not necessarily uh, because we think that the players there are doped. We just simply have an issue that they are not 100% transparent in what they're doing and how they're dealing with the facts. I mean, the rules are clear. But when cases arrive because of their collective bargaining agreements with the players, uh, people don't know. And then when people don't know, they always think that who is hiding is, is guilty. And I don't think they're guilty of anything. They're probably only guilty of not wanting really to adapt to international standards and to under underline or uh, sign the, the WADA code. I think the biggest achievement is that um, there are probably two. Um, we're probably not there to say that one of them is ours so directly, but certainly one is that we have a pre-Olympic tournament. We've been uh, which which changes a little bit the qualification system to the Olympic Games and allows us to ensure that the better teams come to the Olympic Games. For us, that's it's very important because we are in a in a quest for having 16 teams rather than 12 teams at the Olympic Games and we want to demonstrate how strong basketball is and how many good countries actually risk of remaining outside of the Olympic Games because of the limitation of number of teams. So these pre-Olympic tournaments which are coming in uh, now and will be played now in June and in July are very important in that and I think this is a, uh, it's a novelty in our era. We are we're happy with generally with the result of the Olympics. We are in the top two, top three teams uh, sports so we cannot complain uh, very much. The second probably is that being in China and with the Yao Ming phenomena we are going to take a, a, an amazing an amazing wave of, of, of spectators and of television audience for the games and I think this is something which will be wonderful. But probably have to ask the IOC that I'm not so no, I, I have been elected uh, to the IOC in July last year. Uh, this was a long process um, which started uh, 
couple years back when FIBA decided that uh, they wanted to present my candidature to the IOC. And then obviously it stayed there for some time, as, as with many other candidatures. And I, I, I was, uh, some, again, I'm kind of lucky at the same time, uh, at a good place. And, and I think there is a will within the International Olympic Committee to, uh, to try to bring in new people, uh, also younger maybe, and, and with maybe new ideas, so that also it can ensure its own future and its, and its own directions uh, towards the future, because things can't stay like they were maybe some years ago. Other than that, I guess that probably I had a good relationship with many people and I was lucky enough that um, that somehow I won on the buzzer because uh, the vote, because you know, being Swiss, there were already many Swiss, uh, uh, being a secretary general rather than a president, being young rather than having uh, the, 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 the kind of experience that they are. Uh, that there may be some people are expecting. I won by a few votes, but at the end that's like in basketball. The important thing is to win, even by one vote. Uh, to meet the people, travel around, meet the people, and be with the people and, and learn new cultures, traditions. I think that's the most important and the most enjoyable part of the of the job as such. I think what is also enjoyable obviously are the games. Uh, it's an amazing level of, of games that you have the privilege to see almost on a regular basis. Sometimes you even get already bored and you know, I have to go back to the local league in Switzerland to, re to remember what it really is, basketball at the low level. Well, not at the low level, but at the normal level, because sometimes you feel that we, you're seeing an Olympic final is yeah, you, you almost get to think that it's so regular. They have all to play like this, but then you forget that when you, when I started, it, that was not the case. Uh, but clearly, the main thing is 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 um, is the is the joy of seeing people that love the sport and they're working. Most of them on a volunteer base, and so uh, to really see and reflect that you're very privileged to be able to work for what you like. It's kind of turning your hobby in a job. It doesn't happen very often. I see this in five years' time, we will be having a press conference with the President of FIFA, the Commissioner of the NBA and the Secretary General of FIFA. That's the level where we will be in five years. I, I think the key is you, you need to have a vision. Um, uh, the second is that you need to be passionate about, uh, about what you what you're doing. I mean, you need to go to the office every morning, even if you were on a court, on a sports court, on the field, on the weekend and you'd like to go home. No, no, no. The Monday morning you're back on the office and you're still happy to be in the office. I think that's, that's certainly the key to, be, to, to, to enjoy what you're doing and to love your sport. I think those two things, if they're not existing, you should be doing something else.